All right, so show a little bit about something on a project I'm working on. I'm integrating um, house network with TV cable, bedroom, stuff like that on what I call a super outlet and a super connectivity system. And basically this is going to get hidden up inside of a wall so that we can live ethernet the house and it's really not all that expensive, about, you know, under $1,000 for the whole thing. But when you're looking at the appraisal value of a place that's hardwired Ethernet, I, I think it's way, way over that. And so it's a good payoff. And then the other thing is that a lot of people kind of expect but don't always get, and it's part of an update, is upgrading your system so that you can have... Um, cable TV in there. Neither one requires a permit. Low voltage wiring does not require permits in 99.9% .9 of the country for household uh, stuff. I've never seen anyone pull permits for commercial applications either because it's still goods installation. Okay, this is still more of an installation than, you know, uh, major wiring. And the only thing is that when you do these things, they are not self-powered. Cable is, okay, the, the, your regular cable is. Uh, so you do want to have extra outlets so you can run your little router. And you want to be able to access it if your Ethernet goes out. But what this allows us to do is have higher security, higher performance, hardware Ethernet in every significant room of the house. Plus, depending on the positions of these cables, now here I color-coded it, um, your, your internet in any one of the rooms can be fed from cable like a, a DSL line, a cable DSL line, can become the source cable. It's just somebody has to get down to the router, uh, move the things around and know which one goes to which room. And that's something we've got to trace and label and do all that fun stuff. The other thing is that when you're running the wires, you, you want to try and have your data cables run in different places than what the power cables do. And the, the thing to avoid is what sometimes is impossible to avoid is, let's say, when uh, the, the, this data cable runs in the same path as a power cable. Up here, we have data pay cables that cross a power cable. That's that's a, a kind of okay. It's just that if they run a long path parallel to each other, it can degrade but not prevent the quality of the data on the data cable. However, I've, if you look in Best Buy stores, you'll notice that there is plenty of 20-foot runs where data and power cables run together and everything seems to work fine. Uh, 20, 30 foot runs is normal, but generally speaking, you you want them to be a little separate from each other. So, little tip of the day, low voltage wiring. This is going to be part one of a video. Part two, we're going to show how the outlets work on that.